To begin operation, you come to the touchpad at the bottom of the drive side arm assembly. You have to unlock the touchpad by pressing and holding the lock button for at least three seconds or until that LED comes on at the bottom. When that LED is on, you can operate your awning and program all the settings that you want during operation. To retract, you can press the retract button and this will bring in the awning. If you set your wind sensor, you press the wind button and you can set the sensitivity of the wind sensor. One bar is the lowest sensitivity and will require the most vibration of the assembly to retract the awning. The middle bar is medium sensitivity and requires a medium amount of vibration through your arm assembly to retract. And all three bars require the least amount of vibration in the arm assembly to retract. And when it senses that vibration, it will automatically retract the entire awning. Your awning will also flash the LED light as an indication that it is retracting the awning automatically. If you have the wind sensor installed, you can also automatically extend your awning. To do that, you would press the extend button two times within two seconds, or you can manually extend your awning by pressing and holding that button. This will fully extend the awning and then it will adjust the awning into the correct position at the end. You should always stay present for the automatic function of extending to make sure your awning doesn't bump into anything during the extension. Next, we're going to choose the side that we want to establish pitch. Pitch can be set by adjusting our pitch arm on our awning assembly to tip our awning for optimal water runoff. If the pitch of the awning is not set and a significant amount of water, snow, or debris accumulates on top of the awning fabric, the awning may pitch itself to purge the excess water. The awning can pitch itself and dump a significant amount of water or snow, and it can do this without notice. In the event water has pooled on top of your awning fabric, you will need to remove the excess water prior to manually adjusting the pitch of your awning. Before manually adjusting the pitch of your awning, you'll want to make sure that you remove any excess water, snow, or debris on top of your awning fabric. You can do this by using a long handled tool like a broom to push up on the fabric of your awning and remove any pooling water or debris. Now that we've removed the excess water, snow, or debris from on top of our awning fabric, we can manually and safely set the pitch of our awning. And we're going to do this on the side furthest away from our entry door. The pitch arm is designed to hold the set position by the operator. An operator can also reset the pitch of the awning by manually pushing up on the Solera pitch arm. But if you are doing this, do not overextend it past the straight line because this can add excess tension to the gas strut and cause that strut to break. The pitch arm will also be reset when you are retracting your awning. The last button to go over at the touchpad is the button that operates the LED light at the top of the awning. At this button, you can turn the awning LED light on and off. And for models that were produced after July of 2017, you have three different settings for this light. You have a low light at 10% illumination, a medium level light at 30%, and then a high level at 100%. At this button, you can also set the IR sensor. To do that, you press and hold until the IR red light sensor light comes on. And then anytime anything passes in front of that sensor, your LED light will turn on at 100% illumination. 
After you're done operating at the touchpad, you can manually lock or let your touchpad time out and it will automatically lock itself. But there's a few other options for operating this awning that are inside our trailer. Let's go take a look. One option that you might have for operating your awning is the one control device. And to operate the awning, you will have to find your awning on your one control touch panel. And you see here, you can retract, extend, and to turn on your LED light, you'll have to go back and find that LED patio light. And here you can see we have all of our lights, including our awning light that we can turn on and off from this touch panel. The one control touch panel isn't the only option you might have installed in your trailer. You could also have switches located throughout your camper that will operate your awning LED and extend and retract the awning. The other optional switches we have installed on our camper are at this front bedroom wardrobe area. You can see we have our extend and retract switch here where you can extend out or retract the awning. And we have our light switch over here. This light switch will do the opposite of what your awning touchpad is doing. So if your light is off, you can turn it on and off with this switch. If your light is on from the button on your touchpad and you try to turn it on in here, it will turn your light back off. So it's important to remember during operation of this light, this will do the opposite of what your touchpad is programmed to do. Let's step outside and go over a few safety tips that you'll need to know while operating this awning. The first few things you want to keep in mind for safety is when you are operating this awning. Whether you're using the automatic extend or you're manually extending your awning, you have the opportunity to overextend that roll tube. Instead of the fabric orientation being on top of the roll tube, it is underneath the roll tube. The reason the fabric is over the top of the roll tube is for optimal water runoff. And when you switch the direction of the fabric, you now have created a situation where the water will gather at that roll tube and will shorten the life of your awning fabric because it is gathering excess water and that can create mold and mildew buildup. To fix that, you'll retract your awning and this will extend it and then correct the orientation of the fabric. 